This is Shuttle Launch Control. We're in Firing Room 4 of the Launch Control Center where STS-122 Launch Director Doug Lyons has joined us to talk about the circumstances this morning. And uh, Doug, first of all, tell us uh, exactly what happened this morning and when it happened. Okay, well, as planned, we came in and uh and uh, picked up with our tanking operations and uh, there's a sequence of events, events we go through we chill the lines down and we get in a slow fill condition uh, both the cross country the lines our, our facility lines as well as the orbiter and ultimately we get into what we call fast fill and that's where we have, we've been uh, experiencing these failures so uh, we were going through that process we had gotten to fast fill um, we've got two things we look at um, the voltages uh, on the circuit, and those were all good on all four circuits. And we also look at um, the uh, discretes, whether they're they're indicating wet or if they're indicating uh, dry. Um, and all of them went wet as expected. And then once we were in fast fill for uh, roughly 10 minutes or so, we went and did the system checkout, and that's when we send simulated dry commands to the sensor sequentially and see if they go from wet to dry. And if they go, do uh, operate in that manner, that's what we're expecting, and that's a good checkout. And uh, so we were watching, of course, with great interest here in the firing room, and, and we had a lot of the MMT members on. And uh, we started the test. We went to sensor number one, and went dry. Sensor number two, it went dry. Sensor number three, and if you recall, three and four were the ones that failed last uh, tanking. Three went dry and four went dry. So it appeared, and, and I should say also that all the voltage, voltages were uh, reading uh, uh, good readings and good values as well. So it looked like we had a good system, and, and of course the, the firing room was, uh, we were very excited and, uh, and felt like we had a, 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 good, uh, a good system and we're going to be ready to go fly today. Um, and we continued to monitor the system, and two or three minutes uh, after this test was run, uh, they were all uh, dry, and we were keeping them in that uh, co condition. And, uh, and then we saw uh, sensor number three go from uh, dry to wet, which was a failure. And uh, at that point, based on our revised LCC, which called for uh, four of four sensors, uh, we were scrubbed for the day. Um, we uh, conferred with our system engineers, and, and, and indeed, we were getting a, a failed signature. So we went uh, and uh, had a discussion with the ops manager, and we did uh, indeed scrub for uh, today. Well, I think uh, at this point, though, um, th there was a fair amount of planning as to what we wanted to do should this happen. Can you tell us a little bit about the plan and where you think we're going from here? Yes. we. Uh, as we mentioned that yesterday, we do have a, a troubleshooting plan uh, in place. First thing we did was we went through a, a suite of commands where we send the, the wet dry commands to the sensors, and that's our standard troubleshooting uh, 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 troubleshooting plan. Um, and um, that went in the work immediately. Uh, and again, when we got through that, sensor number three did remain in the failed condition. Um, at that point, uh, we went into something uh, a little non-standard for, for us, trying to gain uh, a little better insight into the system and collect some more data. What we did is we stopped the flow on the LH2 system and put it in a, in a quasi-stable posture or, or condition, uh, or configuration, I should say, and then we went and we're draining the LOX tank. And, and the plan is to get the LOX tank drained, and then we'll focus on LH2 tank. And we're going to drain the LH2 tank down to the 5% sensor and stop there and, uh, and then monitor the system uh, for, for anywhere in the area of about four hours to see how these, these sensors behave. And, uh, and then at, at that point, we'll continue with the LH2 drain and then secure the pad. Now, this failure today is different than the way it failed the other day. Can you draw some contrast between the two? Well, the, the, only, the only difference is that um, uh, on Thursday, sensors 3 and sensors 4 failed. Um, in this case, only sensor th 3 failed, but they failed in generally the same time frame and in the same manner. So there are some, uh, some similarities. Um, we have seen in the past when we've had an open circuit and we've come back and tanked that the sensors uh, you know, corrected itself and operated properly, and that's what we did see on sensor number 4, but we just didn't have any joy with sensor number 3. I might be asking you to be a little bit 
clairvoyant, but where do you think we go after today? Well, uh, we have a 9 o'clock uh, mission management team meeting, and, and we'll be discussing our options and uh, and our forward plan. And I, I, it would be speculation on my part at, at this time to, to, uh, to try to, um, you know, make a guess on, on which direction we head. But we do have multiple options, and folks have been thinking about, you know, what ifs, if, you know, if, if we didn't have a joy today. So uh, we'll put something together and, 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 uh, and be ready to implement it coming out of that meeting. Well, Doug, thank you very much for telling us the uh, situation and the circumstances, and uh, we'll just await the conclusion of the uh, mission management team meeting to see what the strategy is and where we go from here. Thanks very much. Okay, you're welcome. And this uh, will con conclude our coverage on the attempted launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis this morning. We will have a press conference whenever the mission management team meeting concludes. But uh, in the meantime, this will conclude our coverage of our launch attempt today. From firing room four of the Launch Control Center, this is Shuttle Launch Control.